weird thing to say. Bizarre hospital this is. Sitting there staring at the ceiling. No books, no nothing. Oh, the music stopped. Can I get up? Whoa! Why is that moving? Oh, that's gross. What the hell? What happened there? What the hell was that? Die. Was that just a dream? Bad dream. Just a dream. Oh, here we go, dialogue options. Yeah, really bad one. Yeah, a really bad one. I knew it. I could see as soon as I came in the room that you were having a nightmare. I guess I shouldn't have woken you up. Probably should have. What was it about? I was burnt alive. I can't remember. It's nothing of business. I was burnt alive. I was burnt alive. Actually, it reminds me of something that happened the other day. There was this woman on the emergency unit, and she really wanted to smoke, you know? But they wouldn't let her, of course. She wasn't well at all. Not just injured, but not right in the head. She was on ten litres of oxygen, through the face mask. She had to stay in bed, she was told. But she wouldn't listen, of course. And as soon as they'd left, she lit up a fag. The whole room went up in flames, and so did she. Bloody hell. I thought hospitals had no smoking policies. I, mean, I, got I guess you didn't really want to know that, did you? That's no. just me and my big gob. Typical. I never know when to shut up. <laughs> Sounds like what? Seriously, hospitals have no smoking policies. How the hell should I just smoke in a ward? I don't know. Although, uh... Well, when I had to stay in hospital overnight, uh, an old woman went to the toilet before I did. Came out, smelled like cigarettes. I had to go in there, and then when I came back out again, the nurse came and gave and told me off for smoking in there, when it wasn't me at all, which was just brilliant. But yeah, that's just great. Tell me off for something I didn't did, while you know that I'm feeling incredibly crappy. Nice one, NHS. Could you, I, I didn't even have the wherewithal to have cigarettes on me because I was in pajamas. The old lady, she had a, a bag and everything. And that, it was just mental. So unfair. What was your name again? What was your name again? I forgot to introduce myself, didn't I? I always do that. So sorry, Susan. My name is Elizabeth. But you can call me Liz, like everyone else. You're here a lot. Every time I open my eyes, I see you. They make auxiliaries do crazy hours here. Seriously, I feel like I've got no life sometimes. I'll be here till the morning. To be honest, I keep coming here to hide. Please don't give me away. I just want to rest my legs for two minutes, that's all. What happened to me? What happened to me? Well... How much do you remember? I... I took some pills. And I fell asleep in the chair. I remember how the room kept spinning around me slowly. I felt so calm. And then... 
So I might as well end the field, I think. And I just woke up and saw you. Oh, a field of barley. Oh, that's what it was. I thought it was wheat. Oh, well, never mind. I woke up in a field of barley. Um, something, something, something. I woke up here and saw you. Um, hmm. What would be the best one to say? Let's just go with this. All of a sudden, I was on the field of barley. It was great at first. I felt happy. I was free. But it soon got worse. There was this tunnel, but there was no light at the end of it. Only said. darkness. Then I got lost in the woods. There was my dead body hanged on the tree, a burning car, and a crow, and a deer. I heard something behind the trees, but I didn't dare to look. Then I found the house. The old woman who lived there, I think she was death. Or maybe she was the devil, I'm not sure. She said they call her the Queen of Maggots. She said I should go back, gave me another chance. And so, here I am. Weird dream, eh? Maybe it wasn't a dream. I really believe in that sort of stuff. It's not impossible. It felt real, but it was just a dream. Can you now tell me who found me and what happened? Well, your body went into a coma. You were lucky she came home and found you. I told you that before. What? Who found me? Your daughter, of course. She called an ambulance. If it wasn't for her, you'd sure be dead now, Susan. My daughter? Yes. Why? Why'd you look so pale all of a sudden, Susan? I don't have a daughter. Whoever she is, she lied. But why would she do that? How should I know? I was in a coma, apparently. So she lied? It doesn't change the fact that you owe her your life. I was fine. I didn't ask for any help. Also stand a bit closer to Sorry. The been here. When will they let me go home? When will they let me go home? I'm not sure. Probably not today. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. Look, I shouldn't say that, but you seem like a nice person. I feel like I should warn you. There's this doctor here. They call him Dr. X. He's a chief of psychiatry in this hospital. You won't be able to go home until he's talked to you, and he... He's really good at getting into your head. You know what I'm saying? He will ask you a lot of tricky questions. But he's a really great guy. You should trust him. Well, I've been here telling me about Dr. X. Did you see this daughter of mine? Tell me something about yourself. Tell me something more about yourself. Me? I'm a nobody. I'm just a hard-working girl. We all have to pay our bills somehow, right? I rent a room not far from here. There are two other girls living in the house. One is an auxiliary nurse, like me. She's always sick. The other one is a stripper. Oh my. At least I think so. She's never home at night. Maybe she works at night, like you. Yeah, but I don't leave for work wearing red stockings and heels, do I? No, you're right. You're a real nurse, not some man's fantasy of one. I used to do all that for my boyfriend. You know, dress up as a sexy nurse and all. Well, I did it just once, really. He didn't like it that much. He didn't like me that much either. Broke up with me last Valentine's Day. Of all the days, he chose that one, eh? Bastard. He never told me why, but I don't care anymore. Um, did you see this daughter of mine? Did you see this 
daughter of mine. No, sorry, Susan. Apparently, she came in the ambulance with you. But then she remembered something and had to go. I think someone mentioned she went in quite a hurry. Of course she did. She was worried I'd ask her what she was doing in my flat. Um, saving your life? Yeah, fair, fair point. Do I really have to give her a benefit of the doubt just because of that? One would assume so. That girl is a hero. Maybe real heroes always leave before their identity is revealed. Or she was a burglar, attempting to steal from me. Hmm. That's a possibility too. Have you got anything very precious in your flat? Maybe. Where about Dr. X then? Tell me more about this Dr. X. His name is Xavier Zellman, but everyone just calls him Dr. X. He comes on the ward often, usually late in the afternoon or in the evening. I personally really like him, but you hear all sorts of stories in a place like this, you know. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is he's been very friendly and supportive. Some doctors won't even say hello to you. But Dr. X usually stops and asks how I am. He knows I have some... problems. He can see I'm not happy here. He actually offered me some free weekly sessions. I think I might take him up on his offer. What are they saying about him? Oh yeah, they say he's a big flirt. Nurses, cleaners, patients. He doesn't care, as long as they're wearing a skirt. What about a One girl case? I knew, Linda. I heard they had an affair. Stupid girl. Well, she left, and I never saw her again. Now why do you think that is? Dr. X got her knocked up. They covered it up and quietly got rid of her. Probably paid her some money. I don't know how these things work, but it must have been enough to shut her up. I bet he'll be more careful now. But I can't really say a bad word about him, personally. Well, one thing. Maybe. Don't laugh, okay? I won't. He's got a weird smell. What do you mean? He smells funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just bad aftershave. Or maybe it's something he eats. Oh, thanks for the warning. I'll try not to get too close to him. Now that I think about it, there's something else too. I'll tell you this, Susan. He starts talking to you, and you just open up and tell him everything. It's very odd. I don't exactly hide things from people, but he got some really private stuff out of me. Really private. You know what I mean? Things I wouldn't tell my mother about. And we haven't even started those sessions yet. So, be prepared for that. Sure. But it's a bit too late for me to hide how I feel now anyway. I think I made it very clear when I swallowed those pills. Does that come back up again? How long have I been here? I was told you arrived at the hospital at seven in the evening. You had a cardiac arrest in the ambulance. They had to resuscitate you. Your heart stopped beating for nearly a minute, but they managed to bring you back. You went to the intensive care unit where they gave you a dose of antidote and pumped your stomach. As soon as your condition was stable, they brought you on this ward. It's called Dime Ward. I call it Die Ward because all the patients who come here want to die. It's a suicide watch unit. That's why it's so strict. You have to be careful. Nurses here are trigger happy with the sedatives. Lovely. Why the hell would this kind of place be called Dime Ward? The only dimes we have are dime bars and they're called Dame now. What a weird name for an English hospital. Oh, just need to stretch, all right. Tell me more about this Dr. X or is she just... No, let's, uh, let's just go with... I'm tired, let me sleep now. I'm tired. Let me sleep now. 
you Fine. Had a long sit down. I'll see you again. Be careful who you trust here, Susan. They will be watching you. How do I know you're not one of them? Eh? You don't. Hmm. But do I really look like a bad person to you? I... I don't know. Maybe not. I'll see you tonight. Remember what I said. I will do. Dreams are just dreams. But when they turn into nightmares, it's good to have someone there to pinch your arm and wake you up. Right? What was that noise? Here again. Hello, Doctor X. We'll start with a little chat about your childhood. I want you to be as honest as possible. It's important if we want to get to the bottom of your problem. Count to ten and tell me when you're ready, Susan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Talk. This isn't all about whether you're nuts or not, like we said before. It's about finding what has caused how you're feeling now and creating a working solution. In order to achieve that, I need to get to know you better. Can we talk about your childhood first? Your parents. When you're a child, your life revolves around them. What was your father like? Did you have a good relationship with him? Um, yeah. yeah, I had a great dad. Oh. Oh, she looks adorable, if slightly odd. I have life. very fond memories of my father. He was always there for me, no matter what I did. He never got angry or upset. I suppose I never really gave him any reasons to be. I was a good child. Not perfect. But then again, no one's perfect. Whatever made me try to kill myself, it definitely has nothing to do with him. Where is he now? He died six years ago. Cancer. Do you miss him? Of course I miss him. How can you even ask me that? It's my job to ask these questions, Susan. Let's talk about your mother now. What was she like? Would you care to tell me about her? After I was a child, she was a horrible mother. I had a wonderful mum. Mm-hmm. Let's just go for the top one again. I can't complain. My mum was great. She brought me up well. Me and her. We were like best friends. Like soulmates. We did everything together. She passed away seven years ago. When Dad first got diagnosed with cancer, it was too much for her. He kept pretending he was fine, but she just couldn't take it. Her heart gave up. She died quickly. My father kept fighting it. Another eight months of illness and intensive chemo finally beat him, though. He thought he was unbeatable, but he wasn't. Okay, I'm beginning to get a better picture. That's enough about your parents for now. Let's take two minutes and we will talk about something else. Literally two minutes? <laughs>